Hello, my name is Mitchell Pearson, and today we're going to be working with Azure Data Factory again. This time we're going to be taking a look at working with an array. So you have an activity that outputs an array. There's a list of items that need to be processed. How do you reference those items in Azure Data Factory? We're going to be taking a look at specifically two activities, the filter activity and then the for each activity. And I'm going to show you how you can reference the items within that array in this video. So I've already gotten Azure Data Factory loaded up. Let's jump right in and take a look at this. I'm going to be using the Get Metadata activity. And what the Get Metadata activity is going to do here, just real quick, if we come down here and take a look, is it's returning the child items. These are going to be a list of all of the files that exist within a folder location. Now, in a previous video, I actually set this up and, and so those files already exist, but this is a picture of the files that exist out there in that folder location. Actually, that is the incorrect folder location. That was something else I was working on. Here it is. So you see we have a little bit of a problem here that we want to fix. So in this example, just quick setup, we're going to use the filter activity to actually filter out that CSV file and then the for each activity will loop over the cleaned array. So we're going to take an array, we're going to clean it up using the filter activity, and then the for each activity will take up over with the new array that gets outputted from the filter activity. So let's do this real quick. We are going to go to the, uh, actually, I believe they're both going to be under iteration and conditionals. And I'm going to grab the filter activity and pull that into our pipeline. Go ahead and connect these guys up right here with the successful completion of the get metadata activity. The filter activity will execute. And then the first thing that you need to do whenever you're working with the filter activity is we need to set up the items, right? It says, what are the items? What are the items that you're going to be iterating over? And so the items is something that we would use right here. I'm going to show you the items later, but in order to efficiently get through this video in the least amount of time possible, uh, I will do that here a little bit later, mainly because I've already shown this in previous videos. So this is not something that's kind of like a surprise attack here, but this is what we're looking for. We're looking for that child items output from that get metadata activity, right? So if you have seen previous videos, I like to use the uh, output right here to kind of write the code for me to get it started. And then I finish it off with the actual item that I want to reference. In this case, it's going to be the child item. So we'll click finish. And that gets us going in the right direction. Now, the next thing that we need to do, you'll notice there's one more setting that we need to set. This is where we actually do our filter condition. So how do you evaluate if a, an item within that array evaluates to true or evaluates to false? What is the expression? So once again, we'll go into add dynamic content. This one is going to be under our string functions, right? So under string functions, we'll open that up right there. And I'm looking for one in here called starts with. So I'm going to grab starts with and bring that up here to the top. Now what starts with does is it's going to look at a value that we pass in a string value, and it's going to check that value to make sure that it starts with a certain character of strings or a, you know, a set of string characters that we pass in. And so the first thing we want to pass in here is going to be item open close parenthesis name. That is the name of the item that we are currently iterating over. And then the next thing that we are going to pass in is going to be the value that we want to check for. And so if you remember a moment ago, we're going to do this right here. Let me make sure it was, let's see. Okay. All right. So we're going to be looking for these guys right here. There we go. And if it starts with that text, it's going to evaluate the true. We're going to keep that value. If it does not, it's going to be eliminated. So that should get rid of that fact internet sales CSV file that I have sitting out there. All right. So the next thing that I want to do here is we've gotten that right there set up. We're going to go ahead and click finish. That is the filter activity. Now I like to wait a minute. Okay. It had a little setting there, still saying one. I like to go ahead and debug it at, at this point. The debug is going to do something for me. First of all, I want to make sure that both of these activities are set up and running correctly. Secondly, I want to look at the output, the JSON output, so I know what to reference when I get over to my for each loop here in just a moment. So we'll go ahead and refresh this down here at the bottom. 
we refresh, we see that everything is complete. And now let's take a peek. First of all, you'll notice that for the get metadata activity, the output of that was fact internet sales. Notice right here, this is that child items that we reference. That's how we get that name. That's the child item. And it, it actually only returns two properties, unfortunately. It only returns the name and the type of the file. So if we wanted to go back and get information like last modified, we'd actually have to do that in our for each loop. We'd have to pass in the name of the file. Then we'd have to use another get metadata activity that goes and gets the information about that specific file. So we'd have to parameterize that. Now, that's a little bit more tricky. That'll be in a different video. I'll be recording that tonight as well, but it's a separate video. Uh, but this is the two properties that we're going to be looking for here. So that's the name, that is the type. Then if we want to look at the output of the filter activity, you'll notice that we had five items come in. So there was an input of five, we outputted four. So we only had four items that remained after the filtering took place. And we can actually look at each of those items here as well. So that CSV file that we didn't want has now been eliminated and removed. All right, so I'm going to take this to the next level and we're going to bring in a for each loop. Let's see, I don't have my thing. I don't know how long we've been on the, the video here. I like to keep these as quick as I can. If the pace is too quick, feel free to pause the video. I'm going to go ahead and pull over this right here. And what I want to do with the for each activity is the same thing the filter activity did. We're going to pass in an array and we're going to iterate over that array, performing an operation on each item within that array, within that list. The difference here is that with the for each activity, we want to actually access the output array from the filter activity, not the output array from the get metadata activity. Remember, the get metadata activity had five items. The filter looked at that array, created a new array, and that's what it outputted. In fact, I did a terrible job of showing that to you, so let me do it one more time. Notice right here that what we're going to be looking for is the output dot value, all right? And then we're gonna be bringing back the items within that value. So we're gonna be looking for name. Uh, that's what we're gonna be looking for within the output dot value. So output dot value is our array. So let me go show you this. We're gonna go back over to the for each activity. You'll notice that there is one setting. I've selected it. There's one setting. That setting is where, what is the list of items that you want to iterate over? Just like before, I'm going to hit dynamic content here. I'm going to go ahead and go down and find activities. There we go. We're going to do the output of the filter. And then it's already got the dot output. So we're going to do dot value. And I forgot if it was dot value or values. So we're going to go with dot value. Click finish. Let me check real quick and make sure I got that correct. Yep, we're good. All right, so we have set up the for each activity so that it loops over that list of items. Now, what do we wanna do? Well, what we're gonna do in this one is I'm gonna keep it simple. The next video that I'm going to record, we're going to copy the data, we're going to delete the files, I'll show you how to copy and delete and how to set up the connection manager, the data set itself, the actual data set to dynamically change with each file name. That's a little tricky, but we'll do that in a different video. For now, I just wanna show you how to set this up. And so I'm gonna go into the for each activity. We're gonna edit that and that takes us inside and it creates for us essentially a new pipeline. Now within this, I'm going to keep it simple. We are going to run a stored procedure activity. And with this stored procedure activity, we're going to come down here and reference our SQL account. And what I've done is I have a linked service here that's pointing to a database. It's an Azure SQL database that I have out there in Azure and it's pointing to that database. So I'm gonna go ahead and reference that connection manager. And then under stored procedures, I am going to go over here and find insert file information. Now, insert file information is going to insert a couple of records into a SQL Server database that we have available. And that is going to be this guy right here. So if I execute this code and I run this, you'll see that there are currently no records that have been inserted into this location right here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to execute that stored procedure and pass in those parameters. Now I'm going to import the parameters of that stored procedure. If you're not familiar with this one, that just means you haven't seen my previous videos because I've used this stored procedure before, but this stored procedure has three parameters, a file name, a modified date, and then a record insert date. Now this, remember, we don't have a modified date. That's not part of 
the information that gets returned from child items, right? That information does not exist. But for the file name, we can go ahead and reference this. So what I'm gonna do is type in at curly bracket item, open close parenthesis, dot name, closing curly bracket, all right? And then for modified date, what I'll do is I'll just return the normal time. So we'll do at UTC now, open close parenthesis. So that's just the current date and time. And then for the record insert date, let's do something a little bit more interesting here. We'll go ahead and open up the dynamic content. And instead of just bringing back the UTC date, what if I want to return my time zone? So I'm in the US Eastern Standard Time Zone. So what I can do here is under date functions, I am going to find convert from. So there we go, convert from UTC. I'll bring that guy up here to the top. And then what do I want to convert? Well, I'm going to convert UTC now, open and close parenthesis, comma. And I want to convert that to Eastern Standard Time. All right. And so if I remember correctly, let me kind of hover over this and just remember. I'm throwing this in there because the video is going pretty quick here. Let's see. Show me the text. You can do it. Show me. There it is. There it is. Uh, Pacific. Yep. Okay. So that's what I'm looking for, Eastern Standard Time. So we'll see that when we load this into our database table, we actually get different results. And so this is how you can take that UTC time and kind of convert it to your time. All right, we're going to click Finish. And that's it. So we have a filter activity that's going to look at that array, get rid of any records that we don't want. That outputs a new array, output.value. We use that as the items for the for each activity that it iterates over. Inside of our activity, we have a very simple... Um, action, right? So for every record that comes through that array, we're simply going to insert the metadata information about that into a table that we have. Like I said, another video, I'll show you how to copy the data, delete the file, essentially like we're archiving the file. So processing it and then archiving it. But for now, let's go ahead and run this in debug mode. We'll go back to the pipeline out here. Let's give that a moment to run. Hopefully everything is set up correctly. Don't want to record this again and it says that it's done so we'll go down here and refresh it at the bottom and you see that what happens here at the bottom i'm going to zoom in for you we have our get metadata activity the filter activity that outputs an array and then the for each activity which then kicks off the stored procedure for each item within the array so we have four stored procedure activities now what i want to show you is sql server management studio so we can flip back over there real quick and if we run this code again, here we go, let's go ahead and click execute, we should now have records, right? So you see that we have all four of our files, not including the CSV file because it was filtered out. We have the last modified date, which remember was just simply UTC now. And then we have my time, Eastern Standard Time converted. We extracted the UTC, the Eastern Standard Time from that UTC date. And that's gonna be 9.48 p.m. There you go. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, subscribe, like, leave me a good comment. All of that's good stuff. Uh, if you didn't, don't tell me. And I'll see you in the next video.